Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Watson Michael from Ceylon Institute of English and Leadership. Today we have with us Philip Andrew Bell. He's a two-time Emmy-nominated TV producer, working on projects with Netflix, Fox, CBS, and many others. He's also a performance coach for entrepreneurs, creatives, and business professionals. Today we'll be talking with him about his book, All the Reasons I Hate My 28-Year-Old Boss, which is an entertaining, comedic, and motivational business personal development book that tackles some of the common frustration, annoyances, and mental hangups of being a member of today's youth-driven workforce. Yes, and uh, Philip, if you could uh, say hi to all the viewers. Now, hey man, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and I'm excited to kind of dive in, talk a little bit about the book, talk a little bit about what you have going on. And uh, I'm excited to be here. Thank you very much for asking me to be a part of your, uh, part of your podcast. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, Philip, um, we, we have a unique name for this book. Why have you called this book uh, All the Reasons I Hate My 28-Year-Old Boss? So... I'm a, I'm a television producer in Los Angeles, and a lot of times, you know, you're always looking for inspiration in all, all different areas for new, whether to create a new TV show, uh, you know, and we always joke about, you know, you'll, you'll go through the TV guide and you'll look at the titles of TV shows and you're like, where did they come up with that? I mean, this title is crazy. And a lot of times we will start with a title. Uh -huh. And then we will try to figure out, well, what would that TV show be, yeah. right? We'll start with the title and then go. So oddly enough, I was just sitting, sitting at my desk work. Uh -huh. And uh, sorry, I'm, I'm in Los Angeles. I got a siren going by. I don't know how loud it is for you guys, but anyway. Uh, and so, so I'm sitting in my, I'm sitting in my, uh, in my place one day. And I just, I'm just thinking, I write that and I wrote it on a post-it note. All the reasons I hate my 28 year boss. So the title came first and I really thought like, man, what would that book be about? Well, you know, it's kind of funny. It's kind of silly. It's a little bit catchy. It's a little bit long, but you know, I was like, what would that book be about? Um, and then as I started to, to kind of, I was writing a lot more, I was writing and writing and writing and writing a lot of motivational content for, for friends, for online. I had a blog. I was just doing more and more and more. And then as I started to, that title just kept sticking with me. that post-it note was still there on the wall. And, and so after I started going through, I started looking at it and I was like, you know what, this would be, you know, so many of us deal with having a boss that is younger than us, or yes. we're, you know, we've got four generations, sometimes five generations of people working underneath the same roof and it can make for, you know, we're all people, but we all were raised differently. We come from different places. We have right. different expectations. We want different things out of our work experience when we're 20 versus 30 versus 50. And, and so I started to think how, what's a way that I could write a book that would help bridge the gap. So even though it's, you know, all the reasons I hate my 28 year old boss, uh, it's not a hateful book. It's, it's very much a book that I hope will help bring more and more people together so that they can at least understand what that young guy across the hall is, is thinking or what's going on in his mind. So I hope that it can help unite people. Superb. Thanks. Thank you for the clarification. Great. So um, can you provide us some information on how this book could help us? Definitely. So, so, eight, so the, the book is wrapped in what we call the spine of ageism, right? So the theme, the overall theme of the book is going to be about ageism in the workplace. Uh, so dealing with um, everything from a younger employee dealing with older employees, you know, an older employee dealing with, uh, with, you know, a subordinate that might be younger, trying to understand. It's all about being able to look at a lot of the differences that we put on people through age. For me, it was one of those instances where I've been obsessed with age since I was a little kid. You know, I was the, I was the little kid that wanted to be older, right? I wanted to hang with the older kids. And I wanted to, you know, I wanted to cut the grass already because I wanted to be an, an, an older kid. And yeah. I was always focused on, hey, where do, you know, where do I need to be at 20? Where, where do I need to be at 25? How many, you know, how far should I be in my career? Or, you know, I was always so focused on age 
mm -hmm. that it, it felt like a really good place for me to start when I came and started wanting to write motivational content for people that could help them in the business world. So um, it started there with the age um, and I really, but, but the, there are so many different lessons in the book that are, uh, whether you're 35, whether you're 55, whether you're 21, um, there's going to be lessons in the book that will, you'll, you'll be able to take, apply to yourself and hopefully be able to understand and gain a little bit of perspective to understand that person who's in your office who graduated high school a different year than you did. Excellent, excellent, great. All right. So um, would you mind describing one significant chapter in your book? Sure. There's a, and I don't know how, if your podcast is rated for swearing, but, uh, you know, there's a, there's a chapter in the book. Um, and, 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 you know, the, the thing that was so special, you know, the whole, the way the book is designed is all the reasons I hate my, right? So each chapter is a reason that you would hate your boss. Um, as I was reading or writing and writing and writing, I actually had an instance where I started a new job and boom, like was getting along with the guy. Everything was cool. And then all of a sudden, you know, he's, he's my boss. He, you know, he, he got the job that I thought I was going to get. And I didn't get uh -huh. whatever. It's cool. Met him. Nice guy. And then, you know, we start talking about shows we've worked on and different yeah. things and start talking about age and sure as hell. If he doesn't tell me that he's 28 years old uh -huh. and I'm, and at this time I'm older than he is, he's okay. 28. And my first initial thought, right. Was exactly that F this guy. Like, like why that's bullshit. Why don't I have that job? Why did he get the job? Like yeah. all of the things that I had been programmed to believe about age kicked in, right. Mm -hmm. This idea that like, he shouldn't have that job, I said that, right? All the entitlement, the ego, all that came in. Yeah. And, and this was after I had already written 50% of the book, right? So yeah. here I am okay. trying to pawn myself off as the expert of ageism. And I was just as susceptible to the frustration, the anger, the ego, the entitlement that came with being ageism in the workplace. And mm. so that, that, was a, that was a chapter that was really special to me because um, it was my 28-year-old boss, you know? And, he really, and, it was, and, and it was like, the, and like I said, I had already had the title. I had already, so I, I told him, his name was Ian. And I said, Ian, I want you to know I'm writing a book and this is the title. It's not about you, okay. but it might be about you a little bit now. But, uh, but yeah, so that's a, that was just a really fun, uh, just a fun memory. And I think it ended up turning out to be a really good chapter in the book. Um, and I think it just goes to show, you know, it's a reminder to me. And this is a good reminder for everybody, right? We read books. Absolutely. We listen to podcasts. Yeah. We listen to these. And these are still people. I'm just a guy in my apartment in Los Angeles. Thank who you. sat down and made the decision to write a book and I wrote it and now we're on a podcast, right? Like there's all these people that we look up to that, you know, the Tim Ferriss's and the Joe uh -huh. Rogan's and the guys yeah. that they write book and, and we look up to them, but those are still just men and women who made a decision. And those men and women, right, have to constantly be reminded even of the own things they say. And that is so true for each and every one of us. There are things in this book Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, there was about a, there was a, a year, about a year gap. All right. Maybe in between me releasing the book in hardcover and me releasing okay. the audio, the audio, the audible version, right? It's now on audible. Mm -hmm. I re-narrate it. And there were moments when I'm narrating it and I'm reading it and there's things that are hitting me in the book that I'm like, oh, I forgot that. Oh, I need oh. to hear that. Right. Wow. And so, and the reason I say that is because. It's the, the value that's in these books, in these yeah. podcasts, right? This, this should not be the only book you read all year. Mm. I hope you guys will read it. I hope somebody, if you're watching this and you go in, you want to, I hope you'll read it. But mm. it, whether you do it, it should not be the only book you read this year. Because mm. I don't have it all figured out. And neither does Joe Rogan. And neither does Tim Ferriss. And neither does. And what we need to be able to do is read, consume, and, and dive into a lot of different information 
And then from there, we, we get the freedom to start choosing what's the stuff that's going to benefit me the best, right? Absolutely. How do I build, how do I build the best life for myself? And I can take from this person and take here and take here and try to practice this and maybe it can work. And the thing, you know, there's a, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm a big fan of the quote. Um, I can't take a shower on Monday and be all right. clean all week. <laughs> right. So yeah. I can't take a shower yeah. on Monday, be clean all week. So I can't allow last month's book to carry me or the, 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 the podcast I listened to six months ago. We need to constantly be filling ourselves with content it, to keep us moving and keep us going. So um, okay. it's the longest answer to a simple question that you've ever had on this podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. Spot on, spot on. Thank you for that. And um, could you also... Uh, Summarize this book in one sentence. I mean, yeah, if I had to summarize it in one sentence, right? It is how to fight back against ageism and survive a youth focused workplace. It's right there on the front. That's right. So the truth is, look, it is mm-hmm. a let me who the book is perfect for. Right? Let me say this. Okay. If you're listening, if you're listening to this podcast and you have not read a book. In six months. Yeah. This book is for you. I wanted to make a book that was aimed at people that aren't reading a lot of books, that don't have a lot of time. It is very visual. So when you get into it, it's not small little font. It's it's big font. There's there's pictures, there's photos, there's arrows, things are bolded. Everyone I talk, they get through it in about an hour and a half to two hours, right? So it's a short read. There's, I'm a huge believer in momentum. So like I said, if you're someone that's at home and you're listening to this podcast and you have not read a book in the last six months, you will be able to pick this book up and complete the book in about 90 minutes to two hours. And now you've got momentum. You've got one, hey, check off. I at least read one book for, you know, for the year. And then build on that momentum, build on the momentum of being able to, uh, of going and going and going. So um, the book is for everyone. Like I said, that was the sentence. Um, but, uh, but buy the book. If you're still listening, you know, go buy the book. It's cheap. I think it's, it's super cheap on Amazon right now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, for all those who are watching, I would recommend for all you guys to get it on Kindle. Those who don't like paperback, so you can get the Kindle version. So it's a, it's a very good book. And uh, we really appreciate it. And one final uh, question, uh, Philip. What is the advice that you will give people who want to achieve success? So uh, for someone that wants, the, the number one thing when it comes to this idea of, of being successful, right? We need to individually decide what that is. Is that purely financial? Is it material? Is it, is it how our body looks? Is it how we feel? Is it our health? Is it all the, do we want all the things? How quickly do we want, right? I think one of the, one of the biggest issues in why, why the word success can be so frustrating for many of us, especially entrepreneurs and people mm-hmm. that are, it can be such an elusive word. It's such a, it, so many of us want success, but we've never defined it. And because we never define it, we keep chasing and chasing. Yeah. And we don't even realize when we have it. How, how would you know if you had it, if you don't know what it looks like, right? Like, you know, I know what this blue shirt looks like. Cause it's a blue, I can hold, I know what a blue shirt is. So it's tangible. It's real. I can hold it. I know if I'm holding a blue shirt or not. So many of us do not define success. We let it be this idea, this big thing that's in it and, and, and it and it changes. It's, I need all of it, right? I need to be an, a pro athlete or I need to have a, a hit record or I need to be a big actor or I need to be Jeff Bezos. Or I need to be, or I need to create something that will last forever. And I need to be Zuckerberg. And it's like, 
those are not the only values of success. Sure. So the, the very, very first thing that we need to do, especially as creatives, as entrepreneurs, as people that are going to be diving into this world. And here's the one thing I will say in the same way I mentioned, you're going to hear from me. You're going to hear from Tim Ferriss. You're going to hear from Joe Rogan. All of these people have different ideas of what success looks like because sure. it's individual. And the problem that can happen when we don't define it for ourselves is we start trying to take it from other people, try to look at what they, oh, what's their success look like? And then what's this one look like? Oh, and maybe I need this. And maybe I need all these cars and I need this house and I need a, a and we're not actually sitting down and going, hold on, what is it that I want? How am I going to define success for me? And then it's also two things. It's not just, it's really easy to start saying, what do I need to do, right? We talk a lot about action steps. What's the plan? What's the strategy? Cool. And that's important. What do I need to do? What do I need to do? What do I need to do? What do I need to achieve? But we also need to understand, like, who are we is a huge key to success. Am I caring? Am I loyal? Am I loving? Am I ruthless? Right? We have to decide each and every one of us has to decide what do we want to do with our life and who do we want to be? And it's, you got to, you got to, when, and when we start talking about success, we need to have both because I know, I know a lot of people that achieve and achieve and achieve and achieve. And at the end of the day, they still feel less than yes because they, they haven't identified any of the characteristics in which they want to possess. They, they think about all the other stuff all the things that they can go and co collect, you know, uh, all the stuff that looks good on social media, you know, mm -hmm. but we also have to realize like, what is the type of person I want to be? What is the character that I want to have? When, when my friends think of me, sure. what, what, what would I hope that they would say? Would I hope that, you know, I always joke, like if my friends, if I were to die tomorrow and my friends were to say, Oh man, Phil was a great TV producer. What a waste that would be. If the best thing that they could think of about me is to say I was a good TV producer. You know, I, I try to strive to be, I want to be the type of man that when a friend is going through a divorce, he thinks to call me first. I want to be the type of person that when someone is having an issue with, you know, substance abuse, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, they think I can talk to Phil. Phil will be there to have my back. He'll have a good word for me. He'll listen to me, you know? And that has nothing to do with what I achieve or the book that I write or the TV show that I make. And it has to do with who am I and what's the decision? So um, with success, it's both those things, but it's, it's up to you. It's up to me. It's up to us to decide what does success look like in our own eyes. Absolutely. Superb. Excellent. So, thanks. Thanks a lot, Philip. So we really appreciate you taking time on a busy schedule to do this interview with us. We appreciate it a lot. Thank you very much. And we hope to see you soon in the, within the next few months. Definitely. Th thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. It's, been, it's a pleasure getting a chance to talk with you. Uh, if anybody wants to reach out to me, they can. Uh, at Philip Andrew. LA on, on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Uh, you can always shoot me an email if you want to connect, philipandrewla at gmail.com. And uh, thank you so much for your time. And you can, oh, I got a website. Who doesn't have a website? We all have websites, philipbarb.com. And, uh, and you can get in touch with me there. So thank you so much for having me. You guys have a great day. Thank you, Philip.